quickly ask you about the dollar. Um, it's been strengthening uh, versus some crosses. Do you think we're going to strengthen further next year? I think we will. Overall, I'm looking for a 4% increase in the dollar on the dollar index, which Given on average we see about 8% moves up or down in the pre-crisis era of 20 years, that isn't the biggest move ever. So I, th I, I call it conditional dollar strength. So what the Fed has done, they started tapering a modest 10 billion, but at the same time they've really massaged those interest rate expectations downwards. The markets aren't expecting any tightening for nearly up to two years, and because of that, the dollar will move higher, but it's not going to be racketing higher because interest rate, you know, two-year interest rates, which power currency is quite, quite a lot, are going to remain relatively low. So I call it for the conditional dollar strength, 4% 4, 4 move overall, 133 for euro dollar by year end, about 109 for dollar yen. So it's not going to be any straight line high dollar move. As people were expecting in the middle of this year when the Fed started tapering, things is going to be overtly dollar bullish, which I don't think is the case. What are the potential risks that could bring the dollar lower? Obviously, um, the Fed having to stall its tapering or even worse, um, bring back um, some sort of QE should the economy stall. Um, but that, you know, or you know, on the other side, you know, we, the factors that are seen as pushing other currencies lower, which against the dollar, the yen and the Aussie are the principal ones that are seen um, weakening, turn around. But I don't see that. I see that as pretty um, low risk events. I think you know, the, 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 the setup is there in terms of the dollar. And I think it's just a matter of how that pans out. And as I said, I think it will be um, cautious, in the, certainly in the early part of the year. OK, let's take about, talk about gold now, because it's back below 1,200 um, due to the taper worries. You think it's going to move much lower, don't you? Well, I've been sort of constructively bearish on gold for quite a while, and um, probably with good reason. I think we've seen a big shakeout, Q2 and Q3. A lot of people were holding gold in ETF funds, and even though the gold price peaked uh, you know, two years ago, they were still adding to investment in gold, and a lot of that has been shaken out, which is a good thing. But the big challenge for gold is how it reacts when the Fed, um, or more rather, interest rates start rising on the longer end of the curve, so real interest rates starting rising. And that, that's the thing that for me that I look at with gold. You, what are you giving up? When you're giving up a, a zero or negative real interest rate, you'd put it in gold, no great shakes. But when you're having to give up a you know, 0.5% real yield over and above inflation, then it's harder to put it in a non-yielding asset. And, you, and even though we've seen that correction, quite a substantial correction, it's a question of, well, have I got the, the confidence to put it in a non-yielding asset at this point in time? So I think initially, with, I think gold could be pressured down to the 1,000 level in sort of the next three or four months of next year before we see some sort of recovery.